think we're probably going to reach it. I think we're probably going to get it. Yeah. My name is James N. Hutchinson. I live in Glasgow and I would describe myself as an artist who works curatorially. So some of the common threads that kind of appear throughout the show, I guess would be kind of ideas of um, trying to resolve what kind of um, authenticity might mean within a kind of, uh, within a kind of individual practice. So what you see throughout the work is kind of a lot of copies or replicas or even forgeries of other people's work. Then there's also ideas that are maybe related to art education with ideas about how we learn, how we feel our way through the world. And then also ideas about how once we have a sense of how we're working with those things, how we then kind of go on to research and utilise the information that we can kind of find in the world and what research methods or how constructing research methods will affect and generate certain outcomes. I think probably making an exhibition rather than an artwork allows for a kind of more stratified approach to making, a kind of more dispersed form of kind of making. It means that you can introduce lots of different ideas by different people, ideas by historical artists, ideas by living artists as well as your own idea. And instead of making a solo show, which was kind of the original invitation, I decided to bring some of these ideas in and kind of work curatorially. In the atrium is um, a work called the Mannenberg Tornado, which I made last year. It's uh, 26 botanical drawings that are based on an earlier set of botanical paintings that were made by a woman called Margaret Stewart, who uh, lived in Cape Town between 1834 and 1836. She spent the time that she was out there exploring the Cape and producing this portfolio of native species. Um, so last year, I used her travel journal to plot um, one of her excursions onto contemporary Cape Town and I spent a couple of weeks moving around those sites and exploring them. Each drawing in my portfolio represents a single encounter which I had with a person along the route who were from very different demographics um, and live in very different circumstances and I drew um, whatever was growing on site when I had that encounter. There are a number of historical works in the show. A good example um, can perhaps be found in Gallery 5, in which there is an Albrecht Dürer alongside a Marc Antonio Raimondi, and they're both identical images. The one that was produced first was the Albrecht Dürer, which was made in the early 1500s, and Dürer had just opened a new workshop in which he was perfecting the woodcut print technique um, that he developed. The woodcut allowed him to disperse his work much more widely Marc Antonio Raimondi found some of um, Dürer's prints when, in, when he was in a market in St Mark's Square in Venice uh, and he bought them and then he was also a very skilled draftsman and he started producing his own identical print to Dürer's print. When Dürer found out about this he came to Venice to attempt to get Raimondi to stop but the local authorities there told Raimondi that he could continue making this work but as long as he took off Albrecht Dürer's initials. So it was a very early example of an artist trying to exert their intellectual rights over their own imagery. So in Gallery 5 you can go and see the two prints next to each other and you can compare and contrast, see which one you like the best. There are also a number of contemporary works in the show that are made by other artists who I would consider to be part of my peer group. One of these works is called The Pot by Sarah Forrest. So the video represents Sarah's hands as she throws a pot. She explains to us that she's just learned how to do this. And somehow the kind of the act of throwing the pot like works as a proxy for making. We're used to Sarah making videos She's used to making videos and somehow this is a dematerialised form of making. So there is no tactility involved in this. And the video somehow represents her frustrations or her desire to touch the thing that she's making. The kind of paradox, I guess, being that the final work is still a video and we don't ever get to see the pot that she made. I guess what I'd like people to take away from the show is a feeling of how 
difficult it is to kind of uh, to construct a very clear eye, a very clear subjective position. I wanted to create a set of entanglements that are maybe not normally present in a solo show. A solo show is maybe supposed to present a kind of unique vision, a very tight aesthetic that is kind of recognisable across all the works. And somehow I wanted the show to be more messy than that, to create a kind of more complex atmosphere, if you like. And, you know, we live in very complicated and complex times. And there are many dangerous people in the world who are trying to make the world appear simple and make the kind of solutions to the to difficult problems appear simple. And I guess I wanted to bring a little bit more difficulty and complexity back into the world.